hyperthermia versus hypothermia. You may be familiar with the term hypothermia. This happens when your body's temperature drops to dangerously low levels. The opposite can also occur. When your temperature climbs too high and threatens your health, it is known as hyperthermia. Hyperthermia is actually an umbrella term. It refers to several conditions that can occur when your body's heat regulation system can't handle the heat in your environment. You, you, you are said to have a severe hypo, hyperthermia. If your body temperature is above 104 uh, Fahrenheit, or 40 degrees Celsius. By comparison, a body temperature is 35 degrees Celsius or lower is considered hypothermic. The average body temperature is 37 degrees Celsius. So we have different stages of hyper hyperthermia. Hyperthermia comes in many stages. Heat exhaustion, for example, is a common condition, but others such as heat syncope may be less familiar to you. The following is a list of hyperthermic conditions and other health, other heat-related fit illness. Uh, number one is heat stress. If your body temp temperature starts to climb and you're unable to cool yourself through sweating, you're experiencing heat stress. Heat stress can lead to serious complications such as heat exhaustion and heat stroke. In addition to feeling uncomfortably hot, you may also experience the following. Dizziness, weakness, nausea, um, headache. If you're feeling signs of heat stress, get to a co cooler area and rest. Start drinking water or other fluids with electrolytes that will help restore hydration. Electrolytes are substances in the body such as calcium, sodium, and potassium that keep you hydrated. They help regulate your heart rate, nerve function, and muscle health. If your symptoms worsen, seek medical attention. Next is heat fatigue. If long hours in heat, in high heat are causing your are causing you physical discomfort and psychological stress. You may be dealing with heat fatigue. People who aren't used to extremely hot weather or hot working conditions are especially vulnerable to heat fatigue. In addition to simply feeling hot, thirsty, and tired, you may have difficulty concentrating on your work. You may even lose coordination. If you notice a strain on your physical and mental well-being, get out of the heat and cool down with fluids. Slow Slowly adjusting to working or exercising in a hot environment can help prevent future heat fatigue. Next is heat syncope. Syncope, also known as fainting, occurs when your, your, when your blood pressure drops and blood flow to the brain is temporarily reduced. It tends to happen if you've been exerting yourself in a hot environment. If you take a beta blocker to lower your blood pressure, you're at greater risk for heat syncope. Fainting is often proceed, uh, is often started by dizziness or lightheadedness. You may feel close to fainting, but if you relax and cool down quickly, you may prevent actually losing consciousness. Putting your legs up can help. As with other help, other heat. Um, related illnesses, rehydrating is key. Any fluid will do, but water or electrolyte field sports drinks are best. Next is heat cramps. Heat cramps usually follow intense exertion or exercise in the heat. They are usually the result of an electrolyte imbalance and are typically felt in the abdomen, leg, or arm muscles. To help relieve heat cramps, rest in a cool place and be sure to replenish the fluids and electrolytes that are lost when you sweat. Next is heat edema. Heat edema can occur if you stand or sit for a long time in the heat and are not used to being in a warmer temperature. This can cause your hands, lower legs, or ankles to swell. This swelling is from fluid build up in your extremities. This is possibly related to a response involving the um, aldosterone stimulated reabsorption of sodium into the blood through the kidney. Usually, heat edema spontane spontaneously subsides over time once you become used to the warm environment. Cooling down and putting your feet will also help as well. Staying hydrated with adequate water elect and electrolytes intake. Next is heat rush. Sometimes, being active in the heat 
for prolonged periods of time can cause red pimple-like bumps to appear on the skin. This usually develops underneath clothing that has become soaked with sweat. Heat rash typically disappears on its own after you cool down or change clothes. However, inspe uh, infection is possible if the skin isn't allowed to cool soon after the rash has appeared. And last, it is heat exhaustion. This is one of the most serious stages of hyperthermia. Heat exhaustion occurs when your body can cool itself anymore. In addition to sweating profusely, you may experience the following. Dizziness, weakness, coordination issues, trouble concentrating, skins that that is cool and clammy, rapid pulse. This is the last stage before heat stroke occurs. So it's important that you rest and rehydrate as soon as you feel symptoms developing. If you don't feel your symptoms improving, seek immediate medical attention. So how to prevent hyperthermia? The first is the first step is preventing hyperthermia is recognizing the step, the risk in working or playing in extremely hot conditions. Being in the heat means taking the following precautions. Take cool down breaks in the shade or in an air conditioned environment if you don't need to be outside. In extreme heat, stay indoors. Stay well hydrated. Drink water or drinks. Uh, containing electrolytes such as Gatorade or Powerade every 15 to 20 minutes when you're active in the heat. Wear lightweight, light-colored clothing when outdoors. If your home isn't well air-conditioned, uh, consider spending time in an air-conditioned places such as small library or other cool public places during hot, um, hot season. Now, for your activity, you don't have to answer anything from your module. So, kung may makita mo kayong activity, activity doon, skip nyo na lang yun. Okay. So, hindi nyo na rin kailangan gawin to. Yung exercise number 3, uh, activity uh, A or uh, 3.1, don't need to answer that. And, uh, itong exercise number 3, 3.2, yung modeling ng um, sports attire, you don't need to do that. So, all you need to do are the following. Worksheet number 5, exercise number 1, and exercise number 2. File name is last name, underscore PE1, underscore week 5. So, that ends our activity for today, our discussion for today. If you do have any question, feel free to message me. Thank you for attending the class. God bless and stay safe. Bye.